Thank you, Mrs. Green. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service at the Hampton United, United Methodist Church. Those of you here and friends joining us on KLMJ Radio and Facebook, you all are invited to the fifth Sunday meal today following the worship service. I'm Elian Trevino, serving as worship leader, and Robbie Stevens will be leading our singing. God is good. All, all the, the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. Please join me in our responsive reading from Psalm 130. <laughs> Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there, but there is, is forgiveness with you, so that, that you may, may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Let's join our voices as we stand, if you're able, and sing together from the faith we sing, I was there to hear your morning cry, number 2051. I was there to hear your morning cry, I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you child with a faith to suit you well in a place of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell when you heard the wonder of the world I was there to cheer you on you were raised to praise dust till rising sun in the middle ages of your life not too old no longer young i'll be there to guide you through the night complete what i've begun when the evening gently closes in you shut your weary eyes I'll be there as I have always been with just one more surprise I was there to hear your morning cry I'll be there when you are old I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. You may be seated. Well, good morning. You may join with me in our opening prayer. Living and faithful spirit, the God in whom we live and move and have our being, the God who is made known in Christ Jesus, Bless us, one and all, as we wait on you this day. Please remove from our minds and hearts whatever impediments hinder worship or dampen our joy. Increase within us that holy longing for closeness, which can open our lives to fuller delight and to deeper commitment. May our hymns and prayers, our searching thoughts, and our hearing of the scriptures strangely warm our hearts. 
receive our sacrifice of praise this day. And by faith, by faith, I claim your healing touch to my mind, body, soul, and spirit. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today is from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 26. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Our next hymn is from the Red Hymnal number 340, Come Ye Sinners Poor and Needy. the good fortune of hearing the beautiful voices of Stephanie Kletzer and Kimberly Berman. We're so happy to have you here.
I've seen love come and I've seen love walk away. So many questions, will anybody stay? It's been a hard year, so many nights in tears, all of the darkness, trying to fight my fears. Alone, so long, alone. I don't know who I'd be if I didn't know you. I'd probably fall off the edge I don't know where I'd go If you ever let go So keep me held in your hands I've started breathing, the weight is lifted here with you, it's easy, my head is finally clear. There's nothing missing when you are by my side. I took the long road, but now I realize. I'm home with you, I'm home, I don't know who I'd be if I didn't know you, I'd probably fall off the edge, I don't know where I'd go if you ever let go, so keep me held in your hands. I don't know where I'd be if I didn't know you. I'd probably fall off the edge. I don't know where I'd go if you ever let go. So keep me held in your hands. You're my safe place, my heart away. You're my anchor, my saving grace. You're my my steadiness, you're my shelter, my oxygen. I don't know who I'd be if I didn't know you. Thank God I do. probably fall off the edge. I don't know where I'd go if you ever let go, so keep me held in your hands. I don't know who I'd be if I didn't know you. Thank God I do. Thank you for that special music, that was beautiful. All right, please stand if you're able for the reading of the gospel. It's gonna be a long one, so just bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. 
for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in there where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was about 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And we'll sing together number 367, He Touched Me. Well, good morning. I hope that you're not overly impressed with that awesome sounding title to the sermon this morning. Multitasking with a vision for the future. I'm sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. But it seems like Mark, our gospel writer, is, is a little multitasking when he takes two stories and smashes them together. Uh, I don't know if Mark is multitasking or if maybe we ought to realize the message and the ministry of Jesus. Oh, what multitasking he is doing, and yet staying on course to do that which we has been sent to do, 
to minister, to heal, to forgive, to call, to get people to question who he is, but also who they are. Who they are. I had to do some research, and I thank you, girls, for the wonderful music this morning. I had to do some research because in looking at the scriptures that I see this story of the 12-year-old girl and, and the older lady with a sickness for 12 years. And to hear the special music and the testimony that comes from that, the testimony of a song that was written and performed by somebody on American Idol. American Idol, oh, you know, winning two Grammys, winning the Bandstand Music Awards seven times, winning the American Music Award four times, and yet to hear her music performed in church gets back to the basic of why she writes music in the first place. I looked at the title of the hymn and realized, oh, what a romantic love song. And then I started looking deeper. And I googled her name and I realized that in her history she grew up in the church. She grew up singing songs and making songs up in her home and at church and worship and praise. Singing in the church choir at 16 years old and becoming a worship leader at 17 years old. Lauren Dangle, if I say her last name right, I, I don't know. We have a lot of apologizing to do when we get to heaven or when we meet face to face. And yet to look at her words and to realize she's not singing to her boyfriend or husband, to look at her and understand the song that is played on the airways that nobody would imagine she's a worship leader, a Christian. To look at the words closely and to realize the symbolism of all that we see in Christ Jesus. You are my safe place. You are my hideaway. You are my anchor. You are my saving grace. You are my constant, my steadiness. You are my shelter, my oxygen. Another worship song, you are the air that I breathe. She writes, I don't know who I'd be if I didn't know you. Thank God that I do. Thank God. In the Gospel of Mark, Mark is making it clear the multitasking that Jesus is doing. He is introducing two stories within one. The first story is the story of Jairus, a leader in the synagogue. Jairus, a very important person the leaders of the synagogue, they're in control. They worship. They lead worship. They lead prayer. The people come to them. The leaders of the synagogue in our gospel lessons sometimes are portrayed as not really liking Jesus. The people seem to be growing to Jesus rather than to the synagogue. You know, four times a day to pray. Come on, come on. Hey, where are you going? Who are you following? What are you listening to him for? Jarius, 
a leader, a ruler in that synagogue. And yet, for all of his friends, for all of the Sanhedrin, for all his relationship with the high priest, Jairus, whose daughter is sick, and he's concerned, and he loves his daughter, Jairus says to himself, how many of you talk to yourself? Jarius, I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> Jarius says to himself, of all the friends I have, of all those that I can go and talk to, of all the doctors, of all those that might even be now at the house with my daughter, I sense that I need Jesus. I've heard things about Jesus that were both good and bad. I'm confused because my daughter is sick. And I think Jesus is the only one that can help her. running out of his office, closing his book of law, passing by the high priest. Where are you going? I'll be back, maybe. He runs to find Jesus. Jesus, I need you. My daughter is sick. Will you go with me? Jesus, yes, I will go with you. You are somebody. It was a very important person. He was a VIP. No, 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 he didn't say that. He said that you are somebody. And your daughter is somebody. Jesus has compassion for people who seek him who need him. And so Jesus goes with them. They're on their way. And then as they're going, Jesus begins this multitasking as this lady comes to him. And she's thinking in her mind that this Jesus is my last hope. I am a very unimportant person. I have no money. I have no health or wealth. What I had, I've paid to doctors. They've taken from me. When I money ran out, they said, goodbye, don't call us, we'll call you. And her friends are gone. And her church friends are long gone. She's been bleeding for 12 years. Look back in your Old Testament laws and see if those ladies, if they're bleeding at a certain time of the month, they are unclean, they're excluded from worship until that period of time is over. She's been bleeding for 12 years. She's excluded from family, from friends, from the synagogue, from the priests, from the physicians, from the doctors. She feels unworthy. She feels unholy. She feels sick. Forget all that other stuff. She's sick. And she hears about Jesus, and she sees Jesus as he's on his way. God's minister for the people with compassion and love. She says to herself, 
if I but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And she fights her way through the crowd, trying not to touch anyone. If she touches somebody, they'll be defiled. Carefully, excuse me, pardon me. She reaches out and touches Jesus. Fearfully, she hears him say, Who touched me? The disciples are looking around and says, "Um, He did it. And he did it. Well, actually, I did it. Jesus, there's so many people around you right now. We all touched you. We're shoulder to shoulder. We're on a narrow street. We're walking down together. We're in a group. Maybe Jarius touched you. And she falls to her knees and says, I touched you. Jesus knew. He felt the power of God. He felt the healing go through his body to somebody. And he looks down at her and says, you're somebody. You are a daughter of Abraham. You are my daughter. Addresses her as daughter and says, how great is your faith. Be healed. Be healed. Now, I sometimes wonder, I, I look at scriptures and I kind of wonder about what that means in Hebrew. You know, we got these cord- concordances, they're big words, I struggle with them. Dictionaries, Greek, Hebrew, English. Be healed. And I sometimes wonder how much that means to me as maybe the Holy Spirit is here among us. We remember our opening prayer. We prayed, God, heal us. Heal me, body, soul, mind, and spirit. But in this scripture, I'm kind of thinking that Jesus meant more than just be healed. I think Jesus meant stay healed. Stay healed. Because we can come to worship, we can read our Bibles, we can say our prayers, and then we can walk out the door and tomorrow makes no difference what we did today. Unless we meditate on His Word day and night, as we seek His face, as we pray, as we come into relationship, I think He wants us to stay healed. In the Greek or the Hebrew, whichever it is, the word salvation has that root word of sal, salve, uh, a balm. It is a medical term that you place this on. It is a healing, kind of an, an anointing, if you will. And so I wonder if Jesus is saying... I have healed you, stay healed. I wonder if he's saying to us, I have saved you, stay saved. You know, we sang the hymn, He touched me. Are we telling someone else's story? Are we telling our story? How many of us are thankful that he touched me, that he saved my soul, that he is my shelter, my rock, my salvation, that he is my constant. I wonder. Jesus was good at multitasking. I wonder if we are. And I wonder if we're multitasking at the right tasks, those God-given talents and gifts and tasks. Maybe commands or rules. 
Or maybe as we turn to our epistle lesson from the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians, maybe it's the advice that we need to hear, the advice that we need to take, that it's not just simply what we know, it's more about what we need to do, not because it's a law, but because it's the right thing to do, and we are eager to do it. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, now as you excel in everything, in faith and in speech and in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so also we want you to excel in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command. But I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness, earnestness of others. Maybe even testing your generousness against their generousness. This is a church that Paul had started and nurtured. It is one of many. And so he's doing this as a comparison, one church to another. They're older, they're more established, but now you are a year old, happy birthday, grow up. Grow up in your love for others. I'm testing you. And I'm not necessarily always telling you to compare yourself with somebody else. I could tell you the church in Galatians, the church in Ephesians, the church in Colossians. You are the church Corinthians. Or maybe today if you want to apply the gospel to us or the epistle lesson to us. We are the church of God here in Hampton, Iowa, united in faith, Catholic, Baptist, Lutheran, all of the above, united together. But don't compare yourselves to them. Compare yourselves, back to the Scriptures, compare yourself to the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ who though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I'm giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who have just started in the last year together not only to do something, but to desire to do it. Not to do it because it's the law, not to do it because it's my advice, but because you want to do it in the name of Jesus. Because you love God and because you love your neighbor, you are growing up with knowledge and wisdom. And so now because you want to do it, finish doing it. Or continue doing it so that your eagerness might be matched by your completing it according to your means according to your means uh, there are pastors who would stop right about now and take up an offering to see what means we have what Paul is saying it's not the contextual means of the offerings of the church it's your ministry it's your means it's your doing something for the kingdom of God what has God gifted you with so that you can join in Jesus Christ in ministry to the world what can you do back to the scriptures again for if the eagerness, if the willingness is there, then God accepts the gift that you give. It is acceptable according to what you have, according to what you have given, not according to what you don't have. And I do not mean that there should be relief for others and undue pressure upon you, but it's a 
question of fair balance between your presence abundance and their need so that their abundance in time may supply your need which it has in the last year he's writing to a new church the other churches have supported him in ministry have supported them in their beginning of growth in order that there might be a fair balance as it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. There needs to be balance. And there needs to be not a law, not a rule, but there needs to be a willingness a generosity within us. We look at the ministry of Jesus Christ. We look at the testimony of the disciples and the apostles as they wrote, as they taught, and as they worked among the people. And we ask ourselves, what can I do? What can I do? give. Last night I was in my office, or yesterday afternoon, I was on the computer. Sometimes I take a break from the books and the prayer. Sometimes I take a break and I just kind of, um, where will the spirit, uh, not those demons, sometimes I think there's demons in the computer too, but where will the Spirit take me? Last, yesterday, I found a site called namethathym.com. Namethathym.com. I was amazed how well it fits our epistle lesson for today. The title of the hymn Love is Surrender by Ralph Carmichael. The words, talk about love, how it makes life complete. You can talk all you want, make it sound nice and sweet, but the words have an empty ring and they don't really mean a thing. Without him, love is not to be found, not to be found, for love is surrender Love is surrender to His will. Love is surrender to His will. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As our gifts and offerings are presented at the altar, please stand if you are able as we sing together, My Life is in You, Lord, number 2032. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. I will praise you with all of my life.
Would you pray with us together? Generous, Generous God, God, we offer our gifts with open hearts, hearts recognizing our generosity reflects our faith in you, in you and, and your our actions, actions in the world. In the world. Just, Just as the, as the Corinthian, Corinthian church desired to give, give may, may our giving be a reflection of the gospel in which we believe. Help us to share according to what we have knowing that in the body of Christ we are bound together in a relationship, offering help and hope to one another. Amen. Our closing hymn today is O oh, For a Thousand Tongues to Sing, number 57. We're going to sing the first four verses. to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all Children of God, may you go from this place carrying the genuineness of your love in your hearts. Blessed by Christ who saves you to open your hands and pour out your love in generosity and compassion with and for your neighbors. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Amen.